All right, starting with number one, uh, just kind of taking your knowledge of uh, solutions to quadratic equations to the next level, uh, see what you truly understand. Um, if we have solved a quadratic equation by factoring and gotten these solutions, uh, it would have come from a step before that that looks something like this x minus 3 equals 0, or x plus 2 equals 0, which would have come from this equation. Two things multiply together, get 0, and we should multiply these together, we get x squared minus x minus 6 equals 0. Oops. x minus 6 equals 0. Of course, this is important, otherwise it's not an equation. If you just wrote x squared minus x minus 6, that's great. Um, but that's not an equation, so we couldn't have solved x squared minus x minus 6. We could have factored it, but until it's equal to 0, we can't solve it, or equal to something. Right? Factor the quadratic expression by grouping. Uh, so first, we'll see if there's anything. No, there's nothing that they have in common. 31 is prime, so it's not like we're going to be able to factor out a 2 or a 4 or something from all of them. So we're going to factor by grouping. Uh, so we'll multiply 12 by 20 and get 240. Uh, yeah, and we want to multiply num two numbers to get positive 240. And clearly, they need to add to make negative 31h, because what we're going to do is split up 31h in 2h. Actually, this should be two negative numbers. Negative something times h minus something else times h plus 20. We just split apart the negative 31h into two terms, two like terms. So two numbers that multiply to 240 and add to negative 31. With some searching, we find 15 and 16. Uh, so they add together to make negative 31. And now we're going to look at this group. What do they have in common? They have a 3h in common. That leaves a 4h minus 5. And what does this group have in common? Okay, they have a negative 4 in common. Whenever this there's a negative on this first term in this group, I like to take out a negative. So then we get 4h minus 5. Okay, and just to re-emphasize once again, as I may many, many times emphasize, we have two things. One thing here, one term here, and one term here and we are factoring out the common factor of 4h minus 5. Factoring it out. So we get the 4h minus 5 factor, and what's left from inside here when we factor out the 4h minus 5? 3h minus 4. And there is our factored form using factoring by grouping. This one here, uh, because there's no middle term, should be a little bit of a clue. Uh, if we were to write the middle term, it would be 0x. Okay, so we want to get no middle term at all. Um, and we want to get a negative 81, so that means that we must uh, have a, you know, the middle term needs to get canceled out. So the middle term needs to be the combination of a positive and a negative of the exact same thing. Take note that these are both square numbers, and we get this factorization, the difference of squares. Next, I'm just going to jump down here. I know I need an x times an x to get x squared. Uh, I need something that multiplies to 25 and adds to 10. Uh, 5 and 5 do that. Some of you ahead and runs as x plus 5 squared. That's cool. That works great. Next, let's give ourselves enough room to scroll. Okay, we're going to solve using factoring. Uh, using factoring means we need one side to be equal 0, so we're going to move everything on one side here. Negative 6x squared plus 18x. If we add 168 to both sides, there we go. I know 6 and 18 are both divisible by 16, or not 16, 6. And so I'm hoping 168 is as well. And not only 6, but negative 6. Be 
because I would like this to be a positive in front. Let's see if that works. It's going to be x squared minus 3x uh, minus, get out the calculator, use this calculator, 168 divided by 6. Of course, that's a negative 6 of negative 28. Minus 28 equals 0. Uh, then we need two numbers that multiply to make negative 28 and add to make negative 3. That's x, x. Okay, sorry I was uh, interrupted there. I'm not quite sure what I was saying exactly, but uh, we do need two numbers that multiply to negative 28 and add to negative 3. How about negative 7 and 4? That would work out. And we set x minus 7 equal to 0, x plus 4 equal to 0, because one of them has to be 0. And we get the solutions 7 and negative 4. Uh, completing the square. So just for simplicity's sake, we'll just go ahead and add 2 to both sides. Right, remember, completing the square, it's all about having a factor squared, which means that we must have 2 of the exact same factor times itself. So that's what squared means. Um, I know it's going to be an x and an x in the front to get x squared. What would this number and this number, remember they have to be identical, what would they be? So that when I started to multiply it out, I would get negative 4x. It would have to be negative 2. All right. So if I multiply this together, I get x squared, uh, negative 2x, negative 2x, that's going to be a total of negative 4x. When I multiply it all the way out, I'm going to get a plus 4. I have to add 4 on both sides. This gives me a 6, so I get x minus 2 equals 6. Take the square root of both sides. Always when we take the square root of both sides, we have plus or minus, whatever the square root was. Um, we've got x minus 2 equals plus or minus square root of 6. We add 2 to both sides, we get 2 plus or minus the square root of 6. Okay, I'm going to solve this factoring by grouping. So 3 times 14 is uh, 42. So two numbers that multiply to 42 and add to negative 13. How about negative 7x and negative 6x? Right, so this group here has an x in common, leaving 3x minus 7. This group here has a negative 2, leaving x minus 7. x minus 2 times 3x minus 7 equals 0 x minus 2 equals 0, x, or 3x minus 7 equals 0, we get x equals 2, and if we add 7 and divide by 3 on both sides, we'll get 7 thirds. Completing the square again, no quadratic formula, uh, so we'll subtract 32 from both sides. Um, we need two identical factors that when we begin multiplying them together we get x squared minus 8x that would mean I would need a negative 4 and a negative 4 that's always half of this where does this number come it's always just if I multiply these two out I get x squared minus 8x negative 4 times negative 4 is plus 16 so we add 16 to both sides negative 32 plus 16 is negative 16 uh, we have x minus 4 squared equals negative 16 Take the square root of both sides. x minus 4 equals plus or minus i times the square root of 16. Well, that would just be plus or minus 4i. And we add 4 to both sides. That's what we get. We just put that right there. Factoring. Simple factoring, when we have a 1 there, that means we know that we're going to have an x and an x. Two numbers that multiplied in positive 144 and add to negative 24. Doesn't take long to figure out that's a minus 12. Okay, we could write it as if we want to. We could write it as x minus 12 squared equals 0. Take the square root of both sides. And x is 12. Or we could set x minus 12 equal to 0 and x minus 12 equal to 0. We'll just get this twice. All right, I'll divide everything by 4 here. Subtract 5 from both sides. Take the square root of both sides. When you ever take the square root, remember, 
plus or minus plus or minus the square root of negative 5, that's i times the square root of 5, and uh, that's it. There's not any way to simplify it, so plus or minus i times the square root of 5. Multiply these together, 10x times 4x is 40x squared. 10x times 3 fourths, so let's just do 10 times, or sorry, 3 fifths, 5 cancels the 10, that leaves us at 2, 2 times 3 is 6, that's 6x. All right, on to negative 5 fourths times 4x, negative 5 fourths times 4, negative 5, so that's negative 5x. And then negative 5 fourths times 3 fifths, 5 cancels with 5, leaving us with minus 3 fourths, so 40x squared plus x when we combine these like terms, minus 3 fourths. Yeah. Uh, using factoring, right, that means we're going to have to have equals 0. So 4x squared minus 16x minus 768. It doesn't say factor by grouping, so I'm hoping everything's divisible by 4. This is, this is, uh, and this. Yeah, this is 2. So, just to figure that out, we'll divide everything by 4. We'll get x squared minus 4x minus, let's get the calculator here, 768 divided by 4, 192. So minus 192. This could be uh, a job. Two numbers that multiply to negative 192 add to negative 4, so I don't need a plus and a, a minus because I need to multiply it with a negative 192. Uh, let's see, well I know 192, uh, let's see, it's definitely divisible by 2, let me start there, 192 divided by 2, okay, 96, so I got 192, 96 and 2, 2, and 48, 48, let's just double check, divide that by 2, 48, divide that by 2, 24 by 2, that's 12 by 2, that's 6 by 2 again, 2 and 3, so 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. So I need to find some way to put these factors together uh, in a way that the difference is 4. Let's try like 8 times, that's not going to work, let's 8 times 3. Let's try maybe, it might work if we do 16 times uh, 12. That works. Tw 16 times 12 is 192. We need it to be negative 192, and we need it to add a negative 4. So how about negative 16 and 12? negative 16 and 12. Set x plus 12 equal to 0 and x minus 16 equals to 0. x equals 16 or negative 12. Completing the square, we will move that 9 over to the other side. Find those two identical factors. They must be x plus 4 and x plus 4. It's going to give us a plus 16, plus 16 on this side. We get 25 here. So x plus 4 squared equals 25. We take the square root of both sides, and x plus 4 equals plus or minus 5. Subtract 4. We get negative 4 plus or minus 5. If I take negative 4 plus 5, that's 1. Negative 4 minus 5, that's negative 9. Those are my two solutions. Looks like the last one, last page. Factor the expression. Uh, first of all, do they have anything in common? I do believe they have a 5 and an x in common. So left is x squared plus 17x plus uh, 15, that doesn't seem right at all, let's, uh, what am I doing wrong here, 300, uh, 
hundred divided by five. Sixty. I went the wrong way. Sixty. Okay. So five x is still there. It can't go anywhere. Otherwise, it wouldn't multiply back out to be the original expression. So you need two numbers that multiply to sixty. Add to seventeen. Uh, Twelve and five. Yeah. 12 and 5 is where I went first, and that's what turns out to have worked. 12 times 5 is 60, 12 plus 5 is 17, and that's factored. Something that a lot of people made a mistake in doing was this. They just left the 5x off. If I multiply this out, I'm just going to get x squared plus 17x plus 60, but I need to get 5x cubed plus 85x squared plus 300x, which means... 5x would need to get distributed into this to get to the original. So, careful about that. 5x needs to hang out there. Okay, let's multiply these together. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8i. 3i times 1 is 3i. 3i times negative 4i is negative 12i squared. Okay, and a lot of people got to this point, 2 minus 5i and just minus 12i squared. But remember, i squared is negative 1. So this is negative 12 times negative 1. And negative 12 times negative 1 is positive 12. So we add the 2 and the 12, and we get 14, and we have minus 5i. We use a quadratic formula. First, this needs to be equal to 0. So we have 5x squared plus 3x plus 4 equals 0. Quadratic formula negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared. That'd give us a 9 minus 4 times a times c over 2 times a. Negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus this would be 80. That would be 80. So 9 minus 80, that's negative 71 over 10. So what do we do with the negative square root or square root of a negative? Uh, the square root of a negative is, well, so it's the square root of negative 1 times the square root of that number. And the square root of negative 1 is i. So negative 3 plus or minus i times the square root of 71 over quadratic formula again. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared. Negative 3 squared would be 9. Minus 4 times a times c. All over 2 times a. Negative negative 3 is positive 3. Uh, some of you are getting a little bit confused here. It's we're just going to add this number and whatever this number is. Okay, what is this number? This is negative 4 times positive 1 is negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. So it's going to be 9 plus 4 over 2. So we have 3 plus or minus the square root of 13 over 2. And that will do it. I believe that's the last question. It is. All right, so uh, any questions, let me know. Ask away. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful.